Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to my second channel, Geography Video. This is a episode series where we talk about geography and the world and stuff. And in today's video, I'm not just going to be talking about geography and the world stuff, I'm going to be helping to define it. Because something that Europeans have done throughout history is draw lines on maps that will then become your know, border agreements across the world. One of the most famous examples of this that is causing some amount of issues over 100 years later is the Sykes-Picot Agreement. In 1916, uh, when the Ottoman Empire was falling and the Middle East was basically up for grabs, the British and the French agreed to divide the region into regions of control between them. Uh, you know, the British could have basically the southeastern side, and the French could have Lebanon and a state which never came to be in North, uh, you know, southern Turkey. Basically, the region was divided up into two. They drew lines in the sand literally lines in the sand because it's the Middle East. And, uh, you know, it's something that's happened not just the one time with Britain and France, but it happened with Africa. Here's a map of Africa in the late 19th century. And then after the Berlin Conference, which was a little later, uh, they agreed to divide up the continent and everything besides a couple of countries was colonized. They didn't get Ethiopia. Um, at that point, but you can see how like, oh yeah, they just agreed to turn the continent as this huge messy thing where like there's French West Africa with lots of individual things inside that the British did pretty well from it as well. Even the Germans got a fair number of colonies, the Portuguese got a little bit, the Spanish got something for themselves, uh, you know, the Italians got some stuff. It's a very interesting division of an entire continent, even the Belgians got something for God's sake. Um, it's a very interesting division of an entire continent that inspired me and made me think, you know what, if people hate Europeans drawing lines on maps so much, why don't we go ahead and draw some lines on a map and that's what I'm going to be doing today. I've got this map of the world with no borders on it whatsoever and I'm going to be drawing the borders as I see fit. As a European I have an innate ability you see to draw lines on map and make them magically become real but no as someone who is really interested in geography something I would love to do if the UN said to me tomorrow hey Toy Cat what we'd love for you to do is ignore national governments and uh, lines and people and how people want to be governed. Instead, we want you to divide up the world into, you know, units of power that make sense for cultural, for tourism, and for just, you know, understanding the world map easier reasons. What are you going to do, Toy Cat? This is what I would do to the Mr. UN man. This is the map I would draw him. Because first of all, right, one of the biggest examples in history, even though I respect the Portuguese, actually, you know, the UK's oldest ally, you've got to admit, seeing Spain and Portugal be separate, you know, the number one Google search for Portugal is, why is it not part of Spain? So let's just separate, let's remove that line of questioning. Let's just make Portugal into Spain. And that's the first thing any map needs to do. You can see how right here, if you look at it, it's like, oh, Spain is just begging to annex Portugal, like on a map. So sure, Spain and Portugal, the same thing. Sport Portugal, if you disagree with the name, bad luck on you. So, obviously, if we, uh, you know, we, we do that, we're also going to remove Andorra. We're going to give Andorra to France. Uh, and France is almost perfectly a hexagon, right? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make it just a little bit more perfectly a hexagon, going something like that. Again, France is, uh, you know, tries to call its metropolitan uh, provinces, the, pet, uh, you know, the hexagon. So we're going to make it perfectly a hexagon. And what we're going to do is we're going to give all of these islands uh, away and give those to Italy. Because you know what, Italy... Um, it currently extends a bit too far into Northern Europe. All of like this is Italy right now. Nah, Italy loses all of that. Italy ends right here. But in exchange, what they get is these islands right here. You know, sure, you can have uh, Corsica and Sicily and this one I don't know the name of and the Canaries as well. All of this belongs to, uh, you know, like Italy right there. Switzerland, pretty small. The smallest nation I kind of tolerate existing. So we'll be like, you know what? Sure, Switzerland can vaguely exist and be a little bigger. A little bit more circular as well would really help with their size. And you know what? The Netherlands, they're going to re, 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 re annex Belgium. Let's be honest, no one, no one's ever going to be too sad when they hear that Belgium was conquered by the Netherlands. So let's go ahead. Let's deal with that too. And, uh, you know, actually, should we, should we go, uh, you know, over to the side here? No, let's, let's stay in Europe. Um, and let's mention that, like, hey, looking at these islands right here, the UK and Ireland have right now a border complication. Like, one of the big reasons that there's this huge Brexit problem is like, oh no, the, the Northern Irish border, border backstops. Oh no, what are we going to do about that? Well, the simple solution would be to make Ireland its own whole thing. But because Irish nationalists in my comments annoy me, what I'm going to instead do is I'm going to divide Ireland into two separate islands. Oh, I, I messed up that line. I do not have a steady hand. I'm going to divide Ireland into two separate, uh, you know, continents or two separate countries, rather. We're going to have a West Island and an East Island. They're going to be divided down roughly the lines that correlate with nothing at all. It's going to be the East, where all the cities are, and the West, where everyone speaks Irish, so they can make that their official language. Boom, I have solved the Irish issue. You move the border from the North into the East and the West. Boom, East Island, West Island. Make them compete. See which one's better. Actually, just be clear about this one. We should probably fill in the map and be like, you know what? West Island gets to be red. And we'll make, like, East Island for now, like, green, I guess. There you go. Look at that. Two separate countries. You know, actually, maybe East Island should, like, get some islands in exchange. You know what? No. East Island doesn't deserve... Wait, West Island. I'm, I'm getting this confused. So now the UK also has to be a separate color. We'll make that very clear. 
Oh, <laughs> there we go. Look at that. We've now defined this. Actually, you know, let's cover in the map as, as we go as well. You know, Spain is clearly an orange country, right? Like, no one's disagreeing with that, I don't think. So, Spain is orange. And then also, uh, I guess France has to be like a lighter blue because something that, that makes sense to me, I'm sure. Maybe it's just me. And then, you know, the Netherlands, they're like, basically, you know, they're a green country. That goes without saying, damn it, I'm <laughs> not good at doing this. Switzerland is clearly like a red, but like a... Yeah, you know what, we'll go with like a, the same red as Ireland, boom. We got that. And now we need to obviously draw Germany on this map. And you know what, Germany got, got screwed in the conferences of 1918 and 1945. They lost a lot of the land east here. So we'll just give that back to them. Uh, you know, I don't see any issues that could have with that. Also, you know what, they could have most of Denmark as well. I've always thought it's a bit weird that, you know, Denmark extends so far north. So Germany just gets all of this. Um, <laughs> I see no issues of giving Germany a lot of land in Central Europe. What could go wrong, friends? And also, while we're on the same line, you know what? A country that deserves a little bit more is going to be probably, uh, you know, Slovenia. Slovenia is a lovely country. doesn't have enough land, so Slovenia gets all of this right here. Also, you know, one of the problems of uh, Southeastern Europe, too many countries, right? Have you ever looked at a map and just been like, oh, what, Kosovo? And, oh, you can't even say Kosovo. Well, people get mad in the comments. And like, oh, yeah, there's Montenegro. How many people live in Montenegro? Is it less than live in a small city? No, 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 no. We're, for the sake of simplicity, Mr. UN man, I am giving you a Yugoslavia that is based around Serbia, but also gets some Croatia. You know, none of that Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia uh, border disputes. We make them all the same country again. I'm sure that will have no issues in the region. Also, Greece. Um... I feel like Greece's shape is a little bit annoying. So right now, what we'll do is we'll just kind of like draw it all the way over to... Oh, <laughs> both those lines were wrong. We'll just kind of draw the uh, border of Greece all the way over to there. And, you know, actually, Greece and Turkey will combine into one country as well. I see no issues that could happen here. The Greco-Turkish Union, if you will. I guess Turkey's like a red flag and Greece is a blue flag. So we'll make it like a purple country. So this will be, uh, collectively between them, the turco Greekish Union... And it will solve all the, like, think about the disputes about Cyprus. Independent country with Greeks on one side, Turkish people on the other. Wow, now it can just join this brand new, very exciting uh, Greco-Turkish Union. It is so small we can't even color it. Um, but yeah, Cyprus is dealt with. Turkey and Greece are dealt with. Uh, Yugoslavia, uh, I think it has to be a pink, right? It just kind of makes some sense. And Slovenia, actually wait, Italy is clearly a green country. I don't see any other way that that can be. And then Slovenia is, uh, oh man, we have to clarify that it gets all these islands. I can't do that, man. I don't have this power. So instead, what we'll just do is we'll go Slovenia. That's probably like a gray country, right? Very, you know, like, it's it's like a neutral country. That's what they do. Switzerland's not neutral anymore. It's, uh, it's that. Also, while we're talking about countries that kind of, you know, it's cool that they exist. I love their distinct separate cultures. But in reality, Sweden, Norway, and Finland, they're just a bit, you know... They could exist under the same state. In fact, Sweden and uh, Finland basically have for a long time. So sure, there is the Greater Scandinavian Union. Also, they get back, uh, fin Finland gets back uh, the territories from uh, Russia right there. Look at me, solving more issues. Also, now finally, instead of three countries having to join together to look like a, you know, a dong, now they can look like a dong without that. I mean, I'm just saying, Scandinavia is perfectly looking kind of dodgy. And now it looks even better. And now once we've done that, what we can do is we can give Greenland over to Iceland. I mean, these two countries have so much more in common with each other than they do with Denmark, you could argue. So what we'll just do is we'll be like, you know, Greenland, finally you're green to match Iceland. <laughs> and, uh, you know, these islands as well. And then we'll make this greater country, like, yellow, because obviously, like, Sweden or whatever uh, is the biggest country of the three. And boom, look at this. Look, look at me solving the Western Europe problems. All in just one fell blow right here. Is that the right country? Oh, <laughs> okay, that's, that's this is not working. There we go. Look at that. So now we have to work out like a wet, an Eastern European state to kind of include Bulgaria and Romania and, uh, you know, Moldova and Ukraine. And you know what I'm thinking is we'll make a Bulgaria, we'll make a Romania, we'll make a Ukraine, and then we'll just kind of have those all be awfully different to each other. Just to, again, add, add some stability to the region. The more... The more countries you have, the more stable the region is. Speaking of which, Russia is very big right now, but it's also very hard to like properly follow, right? Like where does Russia end? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get Russia back together with the Central Asian Republics from the USSR, just because you know what? They basically run themselves like um, oblasts anyway, right? So we'll just kind of have a uh, jiggly jaggly lines because they definitely know where all those are. And now we've got Russia back together and also <laughs> almost at the Korean Peninsula. Actually, wait, the, the crazy thing is I thought that was like going too far on the borders. But I think Ru Russia goes, like, all the way out to, like, straight there. So there we go. We've got Russia 
along with some of its USSR gang back together. Also, just because my Baltic friends out there are going to be annoyed if I don't, we'll make a greater Baltic state. Because why not? Got to defend yourself somehow. And also, they'll have Kaliningrad as well. Boom. Nice. Nailed it. Boom. We've got a map of Europe. We've drawn these borders real good so far. But it can only get better, right? Because we're going to have to color this in. We're going to have to color this in. It's a coloring map, so we're going to do that. Russia's... <laughs> I do it the wrong color every time. Russia's this color, I guess. Ukraine has to be this color, like their, their, uh, you know, their flag. This is a lake, so I'm gonna forget that. We'll just leave that white and hope we don't uh, think it's something else. Uh, this over here, um, this little um, Bulgaria, uh, <laughs> Romanian thing, that can also be red. Sure, why not? And Bulgaria bit gets to be green. Boom! Look at that. I've now fixed the map of Europe. Uh, oh, also this should probably be um, part of the Greater Sweden Union. Oh, also I said Scandinavia, but I added Finland to there. I'm sure there won't be any comments correcting me on that one, because people don't love correcting pedantic points on the internet. That's something I know for sure. So next up, we've got China, right? China has this problem where, like, it has this huge mass of, like, Chinese people living over here, right? But right now it has, like, Tibet over there and Xinjiang over there, and, like, those people... You know, it has issues, like, integrating them. How about we just solve that issue for them, and we'd be like, hey, China goes all the way over here now, but it doesn't get Xinjiang or Tibet. I don't actually know <laughs> precisely how I do this on a map. Um, so yeah, we'll make a nice, like, we'll make China like a nice circular boy. I feel like that's the best way to make that map go down. Mongolia now gets to be a triangle, I have decided. And um, India. One of the things people hate about India is like, oh, you see the British drew this line. British divided into multiple countries down um, religious lines because they figured, you know what? The Muslims would like one state, the Hindus another, etc, etc. People hate that. They're like, so many people died because uh, the British divided the world into two states that hate each other. Let's just put India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, you know what, Burma as well, and Sri Lanka, all in one mega state again. That's the only solution I can see to all of those issues. So boom, we've got ourselves in India uh, sorted. Let's uh, color that in. That's India's clearly a green country. I don't see any other way. China is obviously red. Mongolia is going to be pink or something, because why not? And this country, I'm not sure what this is. I guess Nepal is doing very well out of these negotiations. <laughs> you know what? Nepal, by virtue of the fact that I don't know precisely all of my Central European regions, I guess that's kind of Kazakhstan as well. Kazakh, Nepal, um, also Bhutan, also Xinjiang. Xinjiang, you know, I can't, I can't say it. But what I can do is I can fill in this part of the map, a big power in Central Asia to kind of like make the region a bit better, right? Um, as for this area right here, we take everything besides Singapore, because Singapore is too close to my heart to do anything else with. We take everything else besides Singapore, and we make that into French Indochina again, but part two also including uh, Thailand. Because again, the region's just so much easier when you're like, what's the country there? It's French Indochina, Thailand, Malaysia, or or countries from different things, actually. Actually, you know what? Maybe, maybe we divide it into two, just to be, you know, actually kind of color here. We should divide this into two little bits, and we should be like, sure, fine. They're two separate countries, but they're the same color on the map. So me and you, we know they're the same country. Malaysia, Thailand, all the Indochina countries, they're in the same region right now. Laos and Cambodia, haven't heard of them. More like this area. Also, I love Singapore so much. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it from right over here. I'm going to move it to a part of the map that's a bit safer for it. Because I've always thought, you know what? Singapore is a country that deserves to be, one, slightly bigger, and two, it deserves to be in a different part of the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, and we're going to put it, like, right over there in the North Atlantic, between the US and Europe, where it really wants to belong. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. You're not, not too high. It's kind of equa equatorial. They depreciate temperature about there. Where the Azores are right now, I'd love to have Singapore. So there we go. Singapore is bigger, and in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it has been decided. Uh, Indonesia, bit of a messy country, but it's the only way to combine all these islands together. So Hainan, we're going to move up because, you know, Hainan's a part of China. It's where Hainanese chicken rice comes from. I've decided that Hainan is now going to be going all the way. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> we have to expand these things. It's very hard to move things in MS Paint. I'm starting to think this wasn't a good idea. So, uh, yeah, Hainan's going to go over here next to Indonesia. And this is all going to be one big country. Speaking of one big country, actually, I've, you know, again, I... Who, who cares about Papua New Guinea? Papua New Guinea? More like... Actually, you know, I, I care about Papua New Guinea. Also, there's East Timor. We lose the Philippines as well. You know, the Philippines as well. They're another country that could do a bit of distance from the region. So let's take the Philippines and Taiwan, and let's put them up over here with Japan. Like, I feel like these islands get along quite well together, which can't be said for a lot of the world, in my opinion. So let's now fix that. 
and that. Oh, and I've now, I've broken French Indochina, but that's fine. It's now neutral territory, I've decided. So um, yeah, we're gonna make Japan uh, obviously its own nation, uh, that, that goes without saying. And we're gonna give uh, Japan some, some of the islands they lost to Russia back. Also Japan is gonna have Taiwan, I've decided. Because they're so, you know, they've, they've got a lot of friendship links, a French, Chinese, oh, sorry, J Japanese, Ta Taiwanese uh, union, why not? And then the Philippines over here, uh, you know, they get to chill in a place in the world where they're like much more secure, much more free from China, because they've got this in the way. I just realized I accidentally gave Korea <laughs> to China. So let's go ahead, let's make one big ultimate Korea, and let's make it a much prettier color. What what color should Korea be? Clearly a blue, right? Yeah, let's, let's, give, a, let's give a Korea over. It looks like it belongs to Russia, doesn't it? Okay, let's, this is, okay, purple maybe? There you go. Uh, we now have a much more balanced map of Asia. Speaking of areas we need to balance, I feel like looking over there at Australia, Australia's got this thing where whether it's a continent or it's a country, comes down to whether you, like, again, most people think that Australia's not a continent, not because geographical reasons or anything, but just because they're all Australia and it's not really lots of different cultures on one continent, it's more like an island in that way. So what I do anyway, because here's the deal, if you've ever been to Australia, there is hours of gap between Western Australia and anything else in the world. And given that the Australian provinces were kind of independent anyway, we make a Western Australia, and then we also make uh, Tasmania part of New Zealand. So what we do is we color in um, Western Australia, well, actually we'll make New Zealand purple, as you can see, just to kind of clarify that like, yeah, New Zealand, great unique independent place. I understand why they're not an Australian province. Sure, we'll give them uh, we'll give them Tasmania so that they have part of the island of um, Australia, and then we'll make uh, Western Australia, which is again this kind of weird, rugged, outdoory like I don't know how to describe it. It's like the South of America, maybe in terms of like how di 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 it's it's like one city and then it's endless nothing and <laughs> isolation. So that obviously gets to be its own country, and then the east of Australia, which is obviously very different, gets to be a very own different country. And now you look at this map of the world and you see, wow. Sure does to me look like that's a continent and not an island. Boom, solve the debate right there. Um, speaking of solving the debates, one of the problems by, uh, you know, about the United States of America, which right now looks something like this, right? The problem with the United States of America is it's super big and it's got this big problem where like people from the West don't understand the East so well and vice versa. Um, and honestly, Canada has a problem where like, Canada's just like the US, but like, you know, like each city in Canada is more linked to its US counterpart. This is something my Canadian friend Van de Graaff tells me all the time. So how about we just redraw this map? We make Alaska its own thing, because obviously, and then we kind of divide the US into North, East, and Canada, you know, like Eastern Canada, I guess, minus Quebec. <laughs> oh, I guess, we, I guess we're gonna make Quebec separate. You know, actually, no, Quebec does not get to be separate. They join this union and they get even more diluted. And then we have all of this until like Mexico. I reckon this should be one big country, and then the east should be its whole another thing. If you've ever been to Newfoundland, Newfoundland, um, it's so different to the rest. If you've been to Boston, Boston feels so much more like a European city to me than it does like an American city. Disagree if you want. Toronto is an amazing European style city. I like LA, I like Las Vegas, I like um, San Francisco, I like um, all the cities I've been to on the west side of America. Colorado is amazing. Uh, I like all of these places, but they feel, there's like this very different feel as you head further into America. And that's why um, we're gonna make this red. Oh, it looks like we made Canada very big, doesn't it? You know what, sure, Canada's big and America gets, <laughs> America made the bad trade of trading 40, uh, 40 or so of their states in exchange for Toronto, uh, Ontario and Quebec. You know, haven't we all made a bad negotiation at some point in our life? Also Alaska is gonna be this color because now we get to use that. Boom, look at me solving more issues right here. Um, we're gonna turn just the Caribbean into like one big country because actually you not know, minus, we'll, we'll say Cuba gets to be independent, but like there are so many Caribbean countries that right now like, oh yeah, we're a population of 400,000. We're a country because we got independence at the right time. Now, nah, all of that stuff, even the British territories, now this is a Caribbean country of its own that I have made. Uh, I don't know how to color that one in, so we just won't. Uh, also, you know, Mexico, I actually think Mexico has its like oh, whole own thing. Mexico gets to exist, but Honduras and El Salvador and etc. They have their own unique cultures and stuff, but they literally have tried to unify before. They just couldn't, you know, get the, the the wherewithal to do it. Central America is so many countries that have so many similarities in so many ways about their situation in the world, their independence, etc. So you know, I've decided that all the way down to Panama is one Central American republic. People say Central America right now, and it makes no sense because where is Central America? 
uh, doesn't really make too much sense, does it? No, Central America is this country right here. So obviously Mexico has to be a green, but you know, also uh, Baja California. You know, let's make it its own independent place. You know, California needs some independence, am I right? Um, and then also let's make Central America into uh, its own little country as well. It kind of needs to be that way. It has the Panama Canal, so it's got power. It's got other things that people like. Costa Rica is a delightful place, people to always say. And uh, also Cuba. You know, Cuba's a, a whole own place. I reckon it's actually not. Cuba is now a part of the US. They tried to annex it all those years ago, and now they've gone away with it. So America trades, um, obviously, uh, what is it? Uh, what's that? Puerto Rico. <laughs> I was like, there's an island that America owns where they speak Spanish, and for some reason, they just act like it's not colonialism. Um, there's this like one island that they trade in exchange for Cuba. That joins the Central Caribbean Republic. And then we look at South America, and I think it's very clear what we need to do, right? Because looking at South America, call me, tell me if I'm crazy, friends. But South America right now has this problem where like Chile is super long. Like Chile looks something like this on a normal map, and then Argentina's like this. I, I don't like it too much. What I would like to see instead is if Chile, you know, if, if we're gonna be doing some fun stuff anyway, let's combine these two countries into one. Let's make a Chile Argentina, if you will. Um, or Aunt Argentina, if you want to be funny and like that meme. Uh, then we're going to make like a, a Brazil, obviously. Brazil's going to be something like this. It loses a little of territory, but it gets, I don't know, Venezuela as part of that deal. And then we'll make a Peru, which, I don't know, also gets... <laughs> you know, Peru can just be small. And then we'll have the rest be uh, like lots of tiny independent countries, roughly based on the current lines. I don't know the current lines very well. I guess this can be like Uruguay or like Euro fats, and uh, this can be like Bolivia. There we go. We've got some countries that have divided up South America. And now there's like a nice power balance. All the countries are roughly equal power. And now there's no issues of like, oh yeah, who's the biggest power in the region? Because right now, Brazil is like the size of the rest of <laughs> South America combined, something along those lines in terms of economics and population. That's a problem. Wait, this should be purple as well. We're taking another red and another blue country, combining them. Purple country down here. Just saying it makes perfect sense. And then, I don't know, Peru can be like orange. And then these can be buffer states. Doesn't matter who they are, but they keep the free powers at bay. And now I've just solved conflicts in South America, because those happen all the time, right? You know, it's funny that so few conflicts do happen in South America. I wonder what the reason for that is. You know, they've got lots of issues in South America, but war isn't one of them. They go to war with their currency instead of each other. And if that's not something to be proud of, I don't know what is. So next up, we're getting into the regions where we can't really avoid controversy. So let's divide the Middle East. You know, people question me all the time. They say, Toy Cap, I would like to know, are you in favor of a Jewish state? And I say, you know, say what you will about the idea of a Jewish state. But if you want to make a perfect Jewish star, wouldn't it make sense to do that right here in Africa? So, you know, given that, you know, like African countries got some issues anyway, making dodgy deals with China, giving up leases on their land in exchange for helping out China's economy so they get a cheap sort. You know, lots of deal problems going on there. What if we just help them avoid all of their problems, we fix the Middle East, and at the same time, we make a nice Jewish state right here in the central of, actually wait, let's say like right over here in the parts of, uh, this is uh, like some of the most problem-filled regions, I'd say, in terms of, there's a lot of states there right now. They'd all give up a little bit of land, and what we'd get ourselves is a nice, Jewish homeland, because you know, that's a very important issue for me. You can uh, imagine something. And then that means what we can do is now all the Jews can move out of Israel, which means we can make a, uh, you know, like a, uh, you know, mandatory Palestine or whatever. And we'll combine it with Lebanon because, you know, they, they are friends, right? So there we go, boom. Solve one Middle East crisis. How am I gonna do more of these? Well, now that we've solved that also, it looks like Jordan uh, and Egypt, they can get their differences along too. Because I've always thought, you know what, don't have much in common, Jordan and Egypt, but you know what they do have in common? They have in common bordering this kind of region of the world, like a, a region of instability. Jordan seems pretty small. So what we do to fix that is we take Jordan with its current zigzaggedy borders. Okay, I do not know how to draw Jordan. Jordan's something like this, right? And we combine it with Egypt, and now we've got ourselves like a... Because one of the problems with the current world is you, Africa kind of extends into the Middle East, but not enough for people to realize that Africa and the Middle East are linked by a bridge. But geography would be so much easier if you could look at a country like, say, the brand new country of Jordan Egypt, E Jordan, <laughs> and you could be like, oh, there's one country. Like, you know, when you look at um, Turkey, you can see it's partially in Europe, and you can realize, oh, there's a land bridge there. Istanbul, 
crosses the continent. Same when you look at Ijordant. Ijo yeah, Ijordant. <laughs> and you can be like, oh, it turns out the Middle East is connected just like that. You know, right now, Yemen's having a civil war. We could divide it into two. Have the south and the, or the east and the west Yemen. They're called North and South Yemen, but they look a lot more like East and West on the map. Whatever. Uh, we could do that. Or we could be way more fun and just be like, you know what? One of the issues in the region is that Saudi Arabia wants to be bigger. Let's just let Saudi Arabia be super big. We'll let Qatar keep existing because their airline is the bomb. We'll let the UAE exist and combine it with Oman. And then we can make a big old Saudi Arabia because they are a great country that has never done a single thing wrong. Try Name one example. Name, name 160 times that Saudi Arabia has done something displeasurable by the Western standards. I, I will wait for that, thank you very much. Anyway, so we'll make this. We'll make a little Qatar over there. It's gonna be very hard for me to make Qatar without zooming in, so Qatar obviously has to be purple because that's their airline color. I don't know what the flag of Qatar is. I think it's purple and red, right? So yeah, I literally cannot fill it in. <laughs> and there's no Bahrain in this map, so there's no Bahrain in the world anymore. I'm sorry. Middle Eastern islands, but you are gone. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> Whatever, there we go. We finally did it. I, I, Tokat trying to click a single pixel in paint has finally uh, worked. And then the UAE, Oman. Oman, UEA. Dubai, man. Dubai, man. Oh, Dubai. Whatever. Uh, well, this whole thing is one thing. And also that leaves this Irani Iraq area. So again, simple solution. What we do is we say, hey, you know what? One of the problems of the modern world there's no Kurdistan. We make this into Kurdistan. We make Iraq and Kuwait into one thing. And then we make that Iraq. Again, nice big countries. Actually, wait, Armenia and Georgia need to exist, don't they? Ah, do they need to exist? See, when you're drawing maps, it's so easy to just say no. And then they're gone. Sorry, Armenians. What's that? Hundreds of years of... No, I, I feel very mean. No, I, I, Armenia is one of those countries I'm very excited to visit one day. Very sad. I can't do that right now. Um, but what I can do is um, I can go ahead and I can take... Uh, I guess Kurdistan doesn't have any colors right now, so we'll make it brown. There we go. Look at that. This map is getting very colorful. I feel like a, a five-year-old who's just done a nice art project and wants to show the world. But, like, it's looking good, right? Also, this is now Sweden. I've decided this Russian island, very inconvenient having it be part of Russia. So we'll move it and make it part of uh, Sweden. Kind of makes sense, right? Anyway, so now we've got the big trouble. The thing I'm going to get in trouble, you know, a lot of problems with the world with. What do we do with Africa? Well, clearly, um, you know, one of the one thing that is non-controversial, because I have not made a single controversial change to Africa yet, I feel like this map of Africa looks pretty consistent. No, I think the East African Federation, Kenya, uh, not Mozambique, uh, Kenya and Burundi and uh, three other neighbors, Tanzania, um, I can't name them all that on my head, but five countries in this area are joining together to make a federation eventually. We'll, we'll speed up that timeline. Uh, you know, Kenya, solid enough country. People who, who doesn't love Kenya? Tanzania. Burundi is a great country too. Uh, you know, like, got, you know, and also Rwanda has, you know, one of the greatest, like, tech things going on in, uh, you know, Europe. They've got an airline going. They've got lots of smart things happening over there. So that's a country sorted right there. Um, Matt, you know, we've also got the fact that like Ethiopia, Somalia, these countries need to exist, I would say. So we'll make Ethiopia very roughly again. <laughs> and we'll make Somalia and Somaliland the same country. Because you know what? Your territorial disputes do not phase me, friends. So I just fixed that dispute right there. You're welcome, Africa. Uh, make that orange. Make this pink. I guess Ethiopia should be like yellow, really. It feels weird. Actually, Ethiopia's flag is like yellow, green, and red, I want to say. So, can't really do that so easily. Um, then, obviously, we've got Western Sahara, which we need to seal off and make into, like, its own little thing. Does not exist as any country on this map. And, you know, actually, Morocco doesn't get to exist either. I like Morocco. I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's a great place in the world. But does it deserve to exist? My map says apparently not. Actually, wait. Let's just give Morocco the Spanish Sahara. There we go. Simple. Sorted. Just solved another dispute in Africa. Um, and then we'll just do what the... Um, <laughs> Again, this map from many hundreds of years ago did and just be like, you know what? Coming up with individual names for things, that's really hard in this region. What if we just took the entire outside of... Actually, wait, oh, we can't have this state be landlocked. So we'll just kind of make a little extremity of this that goes down there. Uh, that can be like a neutral state. But otherwise, we'll just take all of this and make it one big country. Like, you know, what? we'll call it French Central North West Africa. Uh, and we'll color it French colors, of course. Oh, wait. We have to use a different one. 
just a nice French purple. And then this country can also be purple, but it'll be separated. There'll be two halves because that's what people do all the time. And in the middle, we'll have a nice neutral, um, I don't know, pink country. There you go. Look at that. I just solved Africa. And now, you know, South Africa, people have problems knowing where it is and like how south in Africa. The, the answer to that question should be all the way south. So how south is South Africa? The maximum amount, my friends. Actually, wait, we can go smaller. This is South Africa now. Boom. And uh, as a result of that, we've got to have Mozambique and Angola. Actually, wait, the Congo. We can combine the two Congos together and just be like this. Actually, wait, let's, let's have a nice fun shape here, right? This can be the Congo, which can be pointing towards South Africa. Because, you know, that's, that's where a lot of people want to be going anyway, right? So this can be the Congo. Um, solid shape for a country, I know. Uh, this is the Congo. And then we'll have Angola be on the left just over here. Because that's, that's, a, that's a great idea, I think. And then we'll have, like, all of these Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique be one big country. And then we'll take this and divide it into... Actually, wait. I need to have some fun borders around here. So let's have a nice quadrupoint border. Let's have this country meet this country, which meets this country, which meets that country. Okay, I can't draw lines. Which meets this country. And boom, now we've got a quadrupoint... No, a five-point border. One of the very first in the world. Or is it actually five points? Yeah, it should be five separate points. So now we color this in. And you'll see how I've just made the world's most exciting map of the, I guess, map of the world. Look at that, friends. Look at that, oh, that screen as well. That can be green, sure. You know, it's an exclave. I've decided on the spot. I'm sorry, Angola. You got, um, you got um, annexed already. That can be red. That can be red. And then this can be brown. Boom, look at that. I have just solved the world. See, I don't get, if, 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 we, if they just had me 300 years ago, the world could have been solved. We could have been like, you know what, Madagascar, clearly its separation from the world means that it's much closer to uh, Greenland and uh, Iceland, so we're going to include that in that giant federation too, actually. Um, you know, I, I don't know why they couldn't have just taken me when they were doing these League of Nations mandates. I would have done a much better job than anyone at the League of Nations, or indeed those French and British negotiators, and I hope you all enjoyed this video where I did precisely that. This all stemmed because, like, people say all the time that, like, you know what? Those darn Europeans drawing arbitrary lines on maps. But the truth of the matter actually is, is, like, these things usually do take into account at least some semblance of, like, what the people think the local area is. Because the real truth of how things are decided is the current situation is always used as a starting point. And then you work forwards from there, you know? You use the current... You know, the reason that so many borders have existed for hundreds of years in some form, the reason why, you know, my map has Egypt having a very rough shape to the same one in the real world is because that's what you use as a basis, even if unconsciously. And hopefully this video makes you realize that, one, drawing maps is a lot of fun. I recommend this. This is this is great. If you, you want to make your own, post it on the subreddit. I'd love to see that. Two, <laughs> I hope this moment makes you realize that, you know, when you draw maps of the world, even if you're memeing around, you're going to end up with something that looks some amount of real. And it's going to have some accidental logic behind. Even if you try to have a map with no logic, you're going to fail. Or maybe you're not. Maybe maybe you agree. Maybe you think this map has no logic and you hate it. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I recently made a book thing about clickbait examples in the real world. So if you thought this video was clickbait, then boy, would you like to check out that book on Amazon right now. Link in the description. Just has to do a little bit of a plug. The more important thing is that you check out the subreddit. And if you if you want to post or upvote anyone else's map that they make, I'd love to see that there. Uh, that subreddit like has some issues of like, you know, we it doesn't have a, uh, you know, <laughs> basically we sometimes have issues where the main channel and this channel subreddits get mixed up, but we're gonna be fixing that. It's gonna be a great place to hang out, post your maps and say, thank you for watching. Do you see that my face went like partially invisible? I became like uh, the uh, Indonesia for a bit there. But anyway, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, this video, you can like it if you did like it. You can share it if you really liked it. And if you subscribed, then you can, whatever, I don't care. Second channel, I just doodled on a map for half an hour and you watched it. So, don't know what's going on here, but thank you for doing that. Goodbye.